Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Port de Vallarta Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the Lapa Lapa Group of Restaurants here in Puerto Vallarta. Those are the Lapa Lapa, the El Dorado Beach Club, and at night, that El Dorado Beach Club transforms into the ever-so-romantic Vista Grill with dramatic views of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up at night in beautiful colors. And of course, at Lapa Lapa, you can enjoy that same view of the Los Muertos Pier all day long for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week, I am going to introduce you to one of Vallarta's great muralists. His name is Misal Lopez. Uh, we are going to hear his story about his Adopt a Mural project. But first, let's see what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, the 13th of June, 2018. It is hurricane season in Mexico. Uh, hurricane season runs from June through October, sometimes actually even into November. And uh, we got our first hurricane of the year. Hurricane Bud just actually came churning by, came passing by Puerto Vallarta, uh, churning up some swells and dropping some rain and skirting along the coast. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the headlines here online with CBS News. Mexico City. Hurricane Bud weakened slightly and was once again a Category 3 storm off Mexico's Pacific coast on Tuesday. Earlier, it had just barely crossed the threshold of wind strength to be classified as a Category 4 storm. Forecasters said that they expected cooler waters to rob most of its punch before a potential collision with resorts on the southern Baja California Peninsula. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said that Bud had maximum sustained winds of 125 miles an hour and was centered about 325 miles south southeast of Cabo San Lucas at the peninsula's southern tip. The Hurricane Center said that the storm was about 225 miles southwest of Cabo Corrientes near Puerto Vallarta. Bud was moving toward the northwest at about six miles an hour and was forecast to approach Baja California Sur on Thursday as a tropical storm. Further weakening, possibly rapid at times, is expected during the next 48 hours, and uh, Bud is forecast to weaken below hurricane intensity by tonight, by Wednesday night, the center said. center said that the hurricane still could generate dangerous surf, and rip currents over the coming days with heavy swells reaching the peninsula later on Tuesday. And of course, uh, as I said earlier, the hurricane passed by and of course manifested itself in Puerto Vallarta in the form of higher surf and that much needed rain that we, uh, that we need here in Puerto Vallarta. Also some cool lightning and thunderstorms accompanied the, uh, the rain as they usually do here in the summer. Uh, I have a link to that article uh, from CBS News in the show notes if you want to take a look at that. Now, Father's Day is coming up this Sunday, and I was wondering if Mexicans celebrate Father's Day too, and uh, when, and what time of year do they actually celebrate it. So I found in the wiki pages a little story about that, and it goes... 
Father's Day is a celebration honoring fathers and celebrating fatherhood, paternal bonds, and the influence of fathers in society. In Catholic Europe, it has been celebrated on March the 19th, which is St. Joseph's Day, uh, since the Middle Ages. This celebration was brought by the Spanish and the Portuguese to Latin America, where on March 19th, it's often still used, but many countries in Europe and the Americas have adopted the U.S. date, which is the third Sunday of June, following this Sunday, June 17th, uh, 2018. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mexicans celebrate Father's Day the same as us, the third Sunday in June. So this Sunday is going to be that big day. Treat your dads right, everyone. Uh, now, remember that Mother's Day is actually different in Mexico. Uh, it has a special date. It's always on the 10th of May. So remember that for those of you who are, hmm, I don't know, wondering about mothers and Mexico. Now, a couple days ago here in Vallarta, actually it was on June 11th, the local taxi union uh, staged a demonstration, which created a, you know, a little bit of a little trouble. They made a large caravan, and they were honking, and they were drawing attention to their, um, well, their contention that Uber is operating illegally in Puerto Vallarta. So they tied up traffic, and it was reported that about 800 taxi cabs took place in the demonstration across the city. Now, I don't know about you, but I use both Uber and taxis, depending on, depending on the, the situation. I actually prefer taxis. Uh, I like to give them the business. At least I thought I preferred taxis. Uh, but that was just until mm, the last couple of incidents that I had on the last trip. It was kind of strange. Um, these things happened when I was with my wife. And um, they happened in succession as well. So we were staying up in the 5th of December neighborhood. We were staying in a Airbnb, which was right above the Barracuda restaurant. Really cool spot. And we were heading to Casa Isabel to catch a, a sunset dinner for our anniversary. So we walked up and we caught a cab. And I grabbed a seat in front and Debbie uh, took a seat in the back. And I was talking with the driver. And Debbie's, you know, like I said, she's sitting in the back. And in this other cab you know, comes driving up right beside ours. And the driver of that cab asks me if I want to buy some drugs. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the F? What are you talking about? So I look over at my driver and, you know, he's this older gentleman and, you know, he's just shaking his head. So I ask him, what do you think of that? I mean, you know, like a fellow taxi driver acting, acting that way. And he basically just tells me how embarrassed he is of, of some of the taxi drivers in town and how it makes him sad because it reflects poorly on Puerto Vallarta, which is his home, you know, place that he was born. Uh, so we got up to Casa Isabel and um, we had this great meal, great dinner, guitar music playing, the sunset, just like it does every night. Uh, I got the ribs, which were great. Debbie got this terrific uh, shrimp dish. I can't remember the name of it offhand, uh, but it was just a lovely time. And then after dinner, we walked down. Uh, you know, when you go to Casa Isabel, you you walk up from where the taxi drops you off. It's like dropping you off like in the driveway. And so we walk down to the entryway where they drop us off. And uh, there's this cab waiting there. And I tell him where I wanted to go. Actually, I wanted to make an appointment at the hospital down the street uh, for ear cleaning. And uh, I know that's too much information. So anyway, I asked the driver how much, and I'm figuring no more than 70 pesos. And he says, yeah, yeah, plus a 70 peso tip. So I, you know, I figured that, well, he's just joking with me. And I said, well, how about 70 pesos? And so he agrees. And we get in the cab, and he starts down this steep hill. You know, Casa, Casa Isabel is located on this very steep, very curvy hill. And anyway, he looks back at us in the back seat, and he says, of course, this is all in Spanish now. He says, okay, let's have a ride. And he puts his arms up the air, and he says, let's go. And he says, 
he raises his hands up off the wheel and he goes, wee, and he heads down the hill from Casa Isabel. <laughs> and of course, I'm looking back at my wife and she's looking at me with this puzzled look in her eye. And, and the driver, he points down to his plastic water bottle, which was not filled with water, if you know what I mean. Uh, he was he was drinking his happy juice. And anyway, he was drinking and driving, okay? So he we got over to the uh, CMQ hospital and uh, paid the guy 70 pesos, and off he went on his merry way. <laughs> Debbie's looking at me like, was he drunk? And I'm like, yeah, what do you think? So the other incident happened the following afternoon, actually. We were driving back from an interview with the owner of Andales, Jorge, George. And by the way, that is going to be a really great interview, you guys. Uh, but anyway, the, the driver was a young guy, and he was acting peculiar. Peculiar. How do you say it? He was acting peculiar. Uh, you know, talking with me in Spanish. But he was complaining about how slow business was and how he needed money to feed his family. And he was just, he was totally drugged up with meth. I got to tell you, we got out of that cab and Debbie says, what was wrong with that guy? So yeah, a couple of interesting incidents, uh, you know, and I, you can contrast that with our Uber ride uh, from our Airbnb to the airport. Uh, the driver, get this, the driver was an attorney. <laughs> he gave up his law practice and decided to drive for Uber. Um, go figure. I mean, but his car was clean. It was air conditioned. Uh, and he was a great driver. Uh, and we talked about how how totally ticked off his parents were that he basically gave up his law degree to go drive an Uber. <laughs> anyway, he said, you know, he was saying, you know, his legal practice was lucrative, but he wanted a slower life, you know, more I don't know, more Puerto Vallarta-like. I don't know. So there you have it. The Uber Wars rage on. It's just, it's just not as overt as it was in the beginning, but still, uh, we are having problems. So just remember the, the rules that I give you for taking Uber. Uh, make sure that if you are summoning up an Uber, that you're not doing it in front of a restaurant or in front of a hotel uh, or next to a taxi stand or um, on the Malacon, where the streets dead in into the Malacon, you don't want to put your Uber driver into any danger. Okay, and and if you do those things, you're going to do that for sure. So, okay, well, since there's not a whole lot happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, I think it's time to get on with our guest and to the interview. So, my buddy Bob McQuig, uh, Bob does photography for a hobby. Uh, and Bob is from Kamloops, Alberta, Canada, and he sent me a picture of a mural that he discovered in the 5th of December neighborhood uh, in Puerto Vallarta, and uh, also of a gallery right next to that mural, uh, which was called The Hive. And he was talking with a young artist there named Misal Ivan Lopez, and he thought that Misal would be a really great interview for the show. Now, Bob, Bob is a listener. And he's a contributor to the show. So what can I say? <laughs> what can I say, you guys, other than Bob, you asked for it. Now you shall receive. You know, I ask you guys every week to come up with ideas and people maybe that I should be talking to. And so I did. I met with Misal at the at the Hive, uh, which is his gallery over on uh, San Salvador in uh, the 5th of December neighborhood. And he gave me a tour of his gallery, and he allowed me to take some pictures inside. And then I, I asked him if he minded if we, we went to a quieter place with a little less echo uh, than his gallery had. So he suggested that we go over to his apartment, and we took a little quick walk on down the street. He graciously invited me up into his home, uh, which serves as his studio, his office, his workshop. Uh, and uh, we had a seat, and I pushed record. And so let's meet my new friend and now yours. Uh, he's an artist. He's a muralist, a guy with a big heart, and just so many great ideas for improving Vallarta with color and art. His name is Misal Ivan Lopez of the Hive Studio Galleria and the Adopt a Mural Project in Puerto Vallarta. Misal, thank you so much for inviting me here. 
Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Okay, no worries. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Are you from Puerto Vallarta? Um, no, I've been here eight years. I'm a, I was born in Novo Laredo, um, Tamaulipas. It's a border town from Texas. And then uh, I was raised in the Twin Cities, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So how, what was your path to Puerto Vallarta? Uh, I got deported. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I got deported. Oops, it was, it was, wrong. It was a good. It was a, an interesting process. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So you are now here in Vallarta, or where, did you land here after you were um, uh, kicked out? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I I, uh, I fought my case for a while, and I I always was felt connected to Mexico. So, but I I felt like I still wanted to stay in the states, right? Like that was where my whole life was, all my friends and everything I've ever known. So I I did actually. I fought for a while and it got to the point where I was like, you know what? This is, this isn't fun. Like I had a, a ankle bracelet on me and I had really? to go sign twice a, a week at a government building far away from where I live. So it wasn't very fun. Uh, and basically after that, I just decided I had talked to some lawyers. Um, my, my friend's parents that are really good friends of mine too are, are lawyers and they paid for, they found the right lawyer they paid for the consultation, and they were both there with me. And basically, the lady was like, the, the, I can't help you. I'm going to tell you straight up because um, it was in 2010 when they were doing the mass deportations mm-hmm. in the States. And it was in the history of the United States, they had never deported so many people. They were deporting thousands and thousands of people every wow. day. So what happens when they mass deport uh, people as they flood the system and they can't favor anybody so I got treated the same way as somebody who doesn't speak a word of English and, and still dresses like they're from Mexico or from whatever country they're from right right and because uh, I graduated from high school and I lived in the United States 21 years yeah so I mean I had a right um, and actually um, I had a right to to have beco- easily become a citizen when I would, turned 18 uh-huh but I was a, I was a street kid, drug addict. Like I left my house when I was 15, so I never. I just kind of always put it off. I never. I always felt American. I didn't. You know, my, my parents would always tell me that I need to do that process. Right. Like once you turn 18, and when I was 18, I was, I was on the streets. You yeah, know? you weren't in any position to to do that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't care. I didn't. I didn't care. Right. I was a. I was a punk. I was a punk kid. You know what I mean? Right. I was just like screw the system. I didn't. I was a. I was tagging everything. Yeah. I was I was uh, I was one of the most prolific, not even graffiti artists. I was a tagger. Ah. You know what I mean? I just I love destroying shit. So uh-huh. um, that was that was like my my past. You know what I mean? And right. I, I had a pretty gnarly uh, like uh, uh, I don't say uprising because my parents are very relaxed people, but they also always let us be very free. Um, I think that might have been part of it. And they were always working too. Right. You know, my parents. Uh, had us when we were my, my had my my mother and father had my first brother when they were nineteen and twenty. Yeah. So and and then they had four right all right after each other. So I have three brothers. So my mother had four kids by the time she was like twenty three, mm-hmm. right? And we, and then we moved to the states when I was two, and this was right before my youngest brother was born. Um, he was born in Minnesota, and we and Minnesota is a very liberal state. Yeah. Um, and my parents got on some kind of program where they, um, they got, we got to live in a holiday inn for, I I think it might've been a couple months. I mean, when you're Mm -hmm. a kid, I don't even know how long it might've been two weeks for all I know, (laughs) but it felt like it was a while. And then, uh, they, they started working and that was my point. I, uh, my parents are always working, right? My whole life, they were always working. Like, um, sometimes they each had three jobs at a time. Wow. Yeah. So we were always at home by ourselves. And uh, and we learned how to cook for ourselves, and we learned how to go do everything ourselves. So I think that was part of the reason why it wasn't hard for me to leave home, you know, when I was right. 15. Like yeah. Most kids are still, like, they need their parents until after, like, when they're still in college, and they're yeah, calling yeah. their parents, like, hey, and that's cool, whatever, you know what I mean? But I wasn't <laughs> like that. I was like... I I didn't I didn't call my parents for two months at a time sometimes when I was fifteen and like it's messed up I didn't, I'm not saying that there's anything right with that it's just um, I just had to do with like my rebellion I guess and and uh, and my confusion right. I was so confused and then like I also had to be very careful 
um, because my parents would always tell me that I had to be very careful because I'm not a citizen and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there was always all these um, these obstacles in my life, you know. Right, right. That I, I kind of uh, I don't I, I don't want to say if I, I overcame them because I I put myself in danger so many times. I I just feel lucky to be here. I'm like as from I think of all the stuff that I've done and stuff, and I'm like I don't even know how. Uh, you know, I'm like a cat. I don't know how many lives I'm at right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know, you're, you've uh, you've really turned things around. Yeah. Oh yeah. Life. Oh yeah. So you came here to Vallarta when? Um, in 2010. 2010. In, like, so you've been August here for eight years. Yeah, I've been here almost eight years. And what's that like? Um, it's amazing. I it changed my life completely. I mean, I I uh, I, I take in everything, even the bad. You know, I just take it in and I learn from it. But as far as, you know, what it Vallarta gave to me and why I stayed is is um, because I was just so inspired by the, the art. And, you know, and I already knew, I mean, my mother is a mariachi singer and she oh. was always like about fol- folkloric Mexican stuff and like would show me. And, and uh, we used to come once a year when we were kids, but only to Laredo. Like I never knew anything else, which is like not even a good example of no. Mexico. Yeah, because that's Laredo's <laughs> yeah. like little America almost. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Everybody's pays in dollars and, and, uh, and it's also very dangerous too. Oh, yeah. Um, so here you've found a place that's safe. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you found like minded people. Yeah. I, I, I remember two, a couple years before I got deported, I, I had a buddy that was that married one of my friends and he would, he would come over and we'd hang out and he was, he would tell me the first time I met him, he was like, why you're Mexican? Like, what the hell are you doing in, <laughs> in these, the States? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm fighting. I'm like, I'm hiding. I'm in hiding. You know what I mean? And I also, like, I, 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 I used to sell drugs. You know what I mean? So I was like, that was part of it, too. Right. Like, I, I was in one of those people that was going to, like, go work a super hard job roofing as an illegal. You know what I mean? Right. Because I, I saw him. Like, I had friends, and my, my mom had, like, her, her boyfriend owned a company where they did roofing. He did really well. And they would offer me these jobs, and I'm like, no, like, I, that's not what I want to do. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm doing all this stuff, like, living in the underground because... You know, I'm trying to fight to stay here. And he's like, well, yeah, exactly, man. He's like, I lived in Mexico 11 years, Yalapa, Puerto Vallarta. He just talked it up for me. And um, he, he, I, just, I just never got it out of my head. Like, you know what I mean? I was uh-huh. like, yeah, PV, like, that sounds cool. Like, I've heard about it. He just, I never even saw pictures. You know, once I got deported, I, the only thing I could think of was that conversation I had with him. And, and I, I just, I uh, stayed in Nuevo Laredo with my grandparents for about a month. And I found a, a Craigslist ad, which like nobody really uses out here, uh-huh. on um, for a small apartment. And the guy was from Chicago. He was my first friend. Hmm. I sent him the uh, deposit, and he held it for me. And I and I came a month after, and yeah, he came and picked me up at the bus station. And yeah, he was my first friend, the guy wow. who rented me. I never even saw pictures of PV. Nothing. I was just like, I was so depressed and didn't care. Like I was ready to die. I was ready to. I don't know. Um, I, so basically it was like, I didn't care if I saw, I just, I just needed to go somewhere where I can speak to people in English and stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I speak perfect Spanish, but I, uh, especially back then I understood it really well and I spoke it, but I, it was, it was a very, uh, American, Mexican American sounding like young Mexican American <laughs> and, uh, Mexicans give each other shit for that because they're not used to accents. Right. So if you say a word wrong, it's like everyone makes fun of you or they, or they see it as something that like you're, you're badly educated. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And um, that's, that's definitely not the case with me because, I, I, I mean, I speak, I'm not the most smartest person ever in the world, but um, I speak two languages and a lot of people don't know that, though. It's like when they're, they're correcting me and I always say, I always make fun of them, like, oh, yeah, like when, you, when you're speaking English to someone and I catch you, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to make fun of you. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> laugh well, in your you, face you, so you know what it feels like. But, you know, it's, it's, it's good because that's the best way you learn. Yeah. That's, yeah, like Get I a learned challenge. My, my Spanish now is I, I still have a couple words that I... That, I, that are kind of like when you say stu- people say stuff in stupid English. Uh-huh. Um, but, and I know I've already been corrected. It's just like stuck there. You know right. what I mean? It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very rarely do people ask me like, where are you from? I can hear your accent or something like that. When I first got here, it was like, oh, you're not from around here, are you? And uh-huh. you're from the States. You're, you're American. Right. And like people would know right away. And now it's like I, I, I speak very freely with, with right. everybody. So you fit in. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mexicans are very like they, Mexicans very accepting people. They're very cool people. You know, they're they like just like to party. Everything's a fiesta. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's it's like tough love. There's a lot of tough love in Mexico. Yeah. That's how things. Uh, that's how things are, um, which is cool. I like it that way. You know what I mean? Um, they're more upfront Mexicans, so I like that. Yeah, they are. Let's talk a little bit about what you do now. What, uh-huh. do, you, what do you do here? You have a gallery. Yeah, I have a gallery. I do a lot of stuff, but I mainly I, I mainly work uh, make a living off my murals. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm I also sell a lot of paintings, but I'm trying to switch to working from home more because the murals is I'm doing these mural projects where we're um, they're called Adopt a Mural Project with the PVStreetArt.com. Okay, it's a website I started with my buddy Joey Real. It's my business partner uh, with the gallery too. And with that, it's um, it's so much work to be able to give away a mural. You know what I mean? And, and uh, <laughs> right. it's so much you, work. You gotta man. knock it's on like doors or knock on car- big walls. Yeah, it's like getting the wall, <laughs> carrying ladders. We don't have a truck. We're working on that. Um, um, being under the sun. Oh yeah. Like beating the time, uh, the money for the paint, like all that stuff. It's a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So now that's why we started the mural project. So we can. So this can. So people that are that are that care about these murals, because we post it online, and everybody's like, "We want more, we want more," and it's like so cool, wow! And we're like, "Well, you guys can support if you if you like, so this can happen easier and faster." Yeah. So um, we've been raising funds, and it's, it's it's cool to see how many people are interested. And we actually haven't even released it; like, we haven't been able to jump on it one hundred percent because it's kind of like a side thing. Like, I do it when I have free time, and it's very hard to to juggle that in my work, right? To, you know, because I'm paying rent in my apartment and and at the hive right plus plus i supply spray paint to all the artists here in vallarta not well, most a lot of them and um and i'm all having to every month also order f- four or five thousand pesos worth of spray paint Dude. plus my, my materials and my food and like you know what i mean it's yeah. like sometimes i wonder how the hell i do it how do you do it yeah i like <laughs> i'm like i guess i'm lucky like honestly i i realize that i i thank the universe for for giving me the opportunities to to be able to to be at this point because you know I've always kind of had work and uh and I've used to struggle a lot too um but I just was stubborn I didn't want to do anything else I speak both languages I could have worked at a at a, as a waiter making 20,000 pesos a month but I was like no I don't want to do that right you know and I just want to keep doing this until it it it, it, it hits you know what I mean mm-hmm. and and it's kind of like it's kind of like a it's a it's a dream, you know what I mean? Like it could happen, it could not happen, but I just I did it as hard as I could, and now I'm at a point where I'm making more than twenty thousand um, off my own work. Good. So I'm like I'm glad that I didn't conform to to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it takes patience and yeah. a lot of hard work, and you're that's that's what you got. And you need drive, and you need to have the vision of what it's going to be. It needs when to be it's a real done. job. Like I, yeah. I look at it. Look, look, I have a desk. Like I bought myself this desk chair. I have my computer here. I have everything right here. Like, cause I I realize you know my agenda's right here. Everything's right next to me on this desk mm-hmm. because I like to I like to be able to be efficient and, and professional and and just because uh, it's difficult, man. Being in contact with people and people uh, I have people contacting me all, all the time for interviews or for hey I want to check out the gallery or what let's you know what I mean or right. I want you to I want a quote for this wall or, and I'm like uh, like it's a lot it, of work. It's, it's funny to like think that like I, it takes it takes sometimes an effort to to call these people that are trying to give me money and trying to give me exposure <laughs> but it's like it's a lot of stuff going on at once it's all yeah. kind of blowing up in my face yeah which is which is cool but i just have to be as organized as possible sure well with that in mind you guys i'm gonna have links to uh to the project so mm-hmm. uh, when you go to my show notes you'll be able to see that and you'll also be able to uh to donate to the project which yeah. is a really great project so tell me, tell us about the um the murals that you've done around town I started, when I first got here, I was looking for the scene. I was like, I'm going to get there. I'm going to start looking for the scene of young young alternative artists or just any artist, right? Mm-hmm. And Vallarta's an art town. Like, it's a, uh, it's, it, it always has been and it always will be. But when I got here, it was one thing in 2010 when things were just beginning to start building up again for Vallarta mm-hmm. and for Mexico. But for PV in general, because they had the hurricane and then the, uh, the, the scare. What was that? Yeah, the, yeah. Um, that people were getting sick or whatever. Right, right. What was that? Though? Oh, they had the Zika virus yeah, thing. Yeah, something or, like which, that. Which, which it, really it, was, it ruined which, this town. Like, <laughs> I did the research on it, and I can't believe how bad it was. That's like, crazy. Years after, like, 
So I came here in 2010 when things was just coming back up, and I realized that there was a there is a scene a, of uh, there was a scene of uh, of of the older artists here. The gallery se- the gallery scene here is amazing. It's mm-hmm. great. It's it's very well known. It's very well established. It's a part of Vallarta. Um, but other than that, I was like, where is everybody? Why is he, why is there just galleries? Why is everybody disconnected? Why is kind of everybody talk shit about each other? You know what I mean? Which is kind of like a, you know what I mean? And it, it's kind of a, a, a thing that people in Mexico, people say like, um, we, we kind of pull each other down, right? The Mexicans, mm. it, it's, 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 it's kind of part of a thing like that. You know what I mean? It's something I think everyone really agrees on. Um, uh, yeah, I just was. I just didn't find the scene. I was yeah. like, "Where the hell is everybody?" And I and I didn't think there was any young artists. And I was like, "Well, that's I guess good for me." You know what I mean? And I, little by little, I started meeting all these uh, younger artists that were in the woodworks and and uh, they were developing their style and all that, and just making friends and uh, uh, working with the people who do want a community and just doing art shows. Like uh, I've been doing art shows since I got here, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Collaborative art shows with as many artists as we can get together. The, the one at the gallery now was uh, Irreal Visual Zero, which he hasn't done in a couple of years. He did about seven of them, and they were, got really popular, and he hasn't done it in a couple of years. So it, uh, it, it was really cool to be able to do it again at the gallery. How many artists? Tw- 18 artists. Ah. Yeah, it was 18 artists. When you go out and do your project, mm-hmm. let's say you're, you find a wall, Right. Yeah, is that what you do, or do you, or do people come to you and say, "I have a wall, what can you do for me?" Um, yeah, a lot of people. That's the thing is a lot of we we don't do uh, like call outs anymore for walls because then you get every person that's like, "Oh, I have a wall in my yard," <laughs> or I have a. It's like, Ugh. it's like, yeah, get out of here with your your wall that's hidden away, or, or you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. like not your not your private wall. I want one that yeah, everybody that sees, everyone right? can enjoy. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's it's. I guess you can't blame them no, for trying. They want you know their private mean? thing. Because they're like, look at these great artists. They're giving away walls. Well, let me see if I can get <laughs> one. And, and, you know, even then when it's a it's an outside wall, right now we're focusing on on walls that are on, uh, on what do you call it, like bus routes uh-huh. mainly. Right. Busy, busy. Yeah, oh, yeah, as busy as they can be. Because we want pe- thousands of people to be able to see them a day, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if that would be the coolest thing. And and that's how it is. Like a lot of the murals are just on bus routes. I I focus on bus routes, and uh, so now what we're doing is is we're raising funds. We're or we're buying more spray paint. We're supplying the artists with paint. We're supplying the artists with food. We're supplying the artists with volunteers, uh, ladders, whatever it is that they need. You know what I mean? To, mm-hmm. For them to be comfortable. Because I I do this, and I've gone. I've had. To, had the worst fits through painting murals uh. by myself under the sun, carrying ladders and in paint, not having anywhere to store my stuff and having to figure everything out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And no support. Nobody knows that I'm doing it. So th- that shouldn't happen. Like there, if someone's doing a mural, if these great artists are doing a mural, there should be people documenting it and posting it for them and, and also them posting it too. But right. someone saying, Hey, look what they're doing. Come on down. It's happening right now. Yeah, we're we're grilling out here, and we have an awning, and and that's our point. We want to start. We we the first one we did with, like that um, was the uh, the big mural outside the gallery, uh-huh. um, but that was kind of random because it was a lot of important artists there, and uh, they're all busy and stuff. So, but we did it in like four days. Okay, now that mural, you 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 did part of that. Yeah. And I'll have a picture of this, by the way, in the show notes if you want to check that out. Yeah. How many other artists uh, worked it's, that mural? It's uh, Quetzal. Tony Collantes, uh, Emmanuel Agüero, and um, Joey Real, Mara Diaz, Freddy Vega. There's about seven of us. There. Okay, yeah, big. Uh, it's a big wall, yeah. yeah. And you know, and, our, and at at that point, we like uh, like I said, we were all busy, and it was kind of sporadic that we didn't make kind of an event thing out of it. We did. We invited people, but we we, we really wanted to make it so it's kind of like a it's a happening, right? We get yeah. a couple awnings, some tables. Uh, a speaker to blast some music, uh, get grilling so people can stop and hang out and, yeah. and watch and invite. Hey, I'm over here. Invite your friends. Like, come down. Mm-hmm. This is super cool. Um, our end goal is to to be able to get the uh, like the the school district to um, give per- permits to um, the teachers or permit the teachers to 
bring the uh, the students out for field trips while the murals are being created. Uh, great idea. Uh huh. Because we we want to also focus on um, like environmental issues and stuff like that. So it's like a it's a learning uh, opportunity for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we're cleaning up the neighborhood. Like wherever we paint, we pick up the trash. And uh, so that's another thing where we want to do is get. Uh, we have people who already want to volunteer. Like I said, we're, it's all kind of in, on hold for when we have time. Right. But the summer, we should be able to have time. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a big sacrifice. Yeah, it is. It's a big sacrifice. Well, I think that it's really important. Uh, I mean, obviously, the work that you're doing is truly important for Vallarta. Mm -hmm. And I think that you do a real good service for calling attention mm -hmm. to the artists and to you know their plight yeah. so to speak right because you oh, know yeah. they're they're working their rear ends off and mm -hmm. maybe they need a little bit of something to exactly. spur them on right exactly I mean, maybe that absolutely and, and cuz like i said i'm i've been there i i'm i'm still there i'm one of those artists and i and i know what we need i know what our needs are uh, mm -hmm. as, uh when we're painting or what we would love you know what i mean yeah it's so, amazing for an artist to be able to have um a helping hand and just people supporting them while they're creating this this great work that everyone's going to enjoy, right? right. And they, and and then when there is help, it's like it's not as as uh, as stressful, and we can paint longer, paint more, or just paint more beautifully. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you have people to talk to when you're working too, yeah. so it's not sometimes so that's lonely, hard. right? Yeah, sometimes that can be hard though, because people want to talk while you're like. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? oh yeah! Oh no, yeah! Like, don't. I'm like yeah, because yeah, some stuff is like <laughs> cool. You're filling in and stuff, but when I'm doing detail and stuff, I'm like, I w uh, it's not the funnest when somebody's talking to you. Right. You're, Leave you're doing me alone. Yeah, you're doing like a detailed, detailed part of the mural. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So talking about this detailed part of the mural, you say you do all, a lot of this stuff using spray paint. Okay. Yeah, most of it's now. Paint. Is it because that stuff lasts longer? What is why? Um, why it's spray just paint? faster. I'm. I'm. I, a lot of people think that I have patience or they look at my work and they're like wow you have so much patience i'm like no you have no idea you don't know, what it takes right? for me to get up there and like paint yeah i don't have a lot of patience so the the, the spray paint is super fast right it's just incredibly so fast. how do you control that i mean how we how do you do these really fantastic murals real uh um, unique and like you were saying kind of yeah intricate well, you know well, with, I, with a spray can i've been sp i've been spray painting I've been using aerosol for almost 17 years, since 2002. So, I mean, I feel like if you do anything a lot for 17 years, <laughs> like, you're going to become, like, ridiculously good at it. You right. know what I mean? Even if it's strange. Because it is strange. Sometimes I even wonder, like, how the hell do I do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, I I've seen uh, artists do it in videos and stuff. And, like, it's kind of part of the movement. You kind of have to copy people. Yeah. As far as, like, the movement and then, like, the... Sometimes you tilt the can in a certain way, or, or you use um, different uh, spray nozzles. Okay, all right. Because I yeah, because I do. I see these guys over on the Malacan. Mm -hmm. These artists are out there with their um, small canvases, and they're and they're painting using spray paint. Yeah, and I'm all whoa. Yeah, really, no brush for sure. Hey, yeah, those brush manufacturers must be really ticked off. Yeah, especially <laughs> now that like it's 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 really a new thing. Like spray painting and street art is uh, aerosol art. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a fairly new thing. It, it started in in New York. Um, well, the first taggers were in Philadelphia, in the like the mid seventies, beginning of the seventies. But uh, in New York in the eighties, beginning of the eighties, they were um, 16, 19 year old kids were spray painting the the trains, the subway cars. Right. So it started back then, and that was just like the eighties. You know, what I mean, that was not that very that long ago. This is yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, a new. Do technique. the math, man. Do the math. That's 40 years, 30 years. Yeah, I guess. But, uh, I, guess I mean, but for an, an art technique, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's a, it's a while. I mean, it's getting yeah. there. But that's why you see now how it's evolutionized. You see, like, some of the best in the world, and you're like, how the, how do they do that with spray paint? You know what I mean? Right. It's I, amazing. I, I'm, it's, I'm amazed just thinking it's about it. But, but you know, some of the best in the world are guys that were around in the 80s and, like, uh, in the 90s and stuff, and... And they're, they, they've developed that technique to, to now. And it's like, that's why I say it's still fairly a, a new technique. Like, I don't think people started doing realism with spray paint until, you know what I mean, like the mid-90s. Right. You know but, I mean? but even like on canvas. Yeah, yeah. People are doing um, faces on canvases now, small canvases. Not small canvases, but like, um, I mean, 
people always tell me like, oh, that's a big canvas. And I'm like, to me, that's a big canvas right there. Right. And he's pointing at one that's about five feet wide by about six feet tall. Yeah. And then, and then like, uh, and then like this is like a normal size, but people consider that to be a big canvas. Right. Yeah. Well, but I would too. That, that's uh, again, that's uh, like four feet by three feet. So, uh-huh. yeah. But even that, this is a decent sized canvas. Even that there's artists who, who do faces on those things with spray paint. Uh, and realism. It's like, wow, man. You know, and there's and there's really high quality brands like Montana is from um, is from uh, Spain. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so you when you order your paint, you're ordering them from all over the world. No, really? I'm ordering a, the brand I use is this behind you that's stuck on the Van Gogh painting. Okay, 360. It's from Mexico City. Ah, so it's so, local. Yeah, it's a local um, performance spray paint. Good. Yeah, because otherwise it'd be too expensive. Yeah, I mean, um, some people I I buy it in bulk. So it's, it costs about the same price as a um, Comex can, mm-hmm. but the Comex can is not performance spray paint. It's it's good for like softly filling in spots. Um, it e- easily drips. It has like more iron in it or whatever I think. So it's more industrial based. Like it lasts under the sun more okay. for like metal and stuff. Yeah, because it is it's an industrial paint. This stuff lasts a while too, but it's more it's creamier. It's more uh, pigment based. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, uh, you said that you use different kinds of nozzles on it. So mm-hmm. you act, do you, do you customize those, or how do you do that? People used to back in the day. Now it's there's so many different kinds brands, and like, um, like one brand will have six or seven or eight. Uh, just what do you call it? The, um, like the sizes, and oh. then they'll have the ones that are like the calligraphy ones. And okay, like, so they're making them strictly for artists right now. I mean, they're not, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. this is no longer, you know, rust world here where you're just painting it on a fence to keep it from rusting over. Yeah, well, they're I mean, making you can, these though. things. You can, you really can. Uh, I want to start promoting it for people that are for that use too. So mm-hmm. I can, right now, is we're, bu- we're going to be building the rack to, to uh, hold this paint. Okay. Because we carry, right, right now, we carry anywhere from four to 500 cans. Um, for once we get the rack of, so we can hang on the wall, we'll have about a thousand cans, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we'll have enough uh, to promote it more. Because sometimes it's like I don't even promote it, and just with amongst my friends, they're calling me, and I meet up with them, and I'll sell them spray paint. And sometimes I'm like, holy crap, I don't even have paint for my jobs, yeah. so I need to order quick. Yeah. So that's why I haven't been promoting it as much because I don't really have the time to be selling it as fast. Sure. Let me ask you a question about uh, local tagging. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you find that if you have a wall that has been muralized, mm-hmm. that taggers stay away? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see, like, in big cities like Guadalajara, you see a lot of murals. It's amazing. There's a lot of talent there. But there's so much art there that you see murals that are tagged up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it pisses you off. But I, I like to think that it's, it's personal beef. Mm-hmm. Um, just personal stuff that the artists have. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just some stupid ass kid who doesn't give a. F- yeah, and it's really annoying. Yeah, no kidding. Because you got to get out there and repair it. It's annoying because sometimes you see these amazing murals and they're like tagged up, and it's like, jeez, man. Yeah, like, what are they thinking? What are these people doing? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, so a lot of times uh, uh, these kids are drunk. So it's like I remember when I was drunk and I was like ro- roaming the streets blasted drunk um like i can't remember what i did right i would i would write on stuff then i was like I, I, not on people's murals but i was write on stuff that i was like what the hell did i write on that for <laughs> or why did i do that giant ugly tag there right right ginormous tag <laughs> like, yeah so you just some do stuff just... that like it's not you know even tagging is obviously stuff you shouldn't be doing right um but yeah it was like i just take it to another level it's like you just don't give a no, and don't, think, don't, yeah, you, you can't, you can't let it bother you too much, right? Yeah, and you think, uh, and then some, some of them might just want, you know, they see that these murals are getting photographed all day, and they're famous, so it's like, oh, you spray paint your your name on there. Right, you then you're famous too. <laughs> yeah, all right, don't give anybody some ideas, infamy. okay, stop No, that. no, no. No, no, I'm kidding. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back to your, uh, let's go back to your gallery, and let's go back to your group of artists, Mm-hmm. The people that you work with, the people that work with you, come to you and all that other stuff. You guys have gotten together and you are displaying art in your gallery, mm-hmm. right? So you've got how many different artists in there? Probably have about five or six at a time. I'm dedicating two of the walls to um, other artists. 
the rest are for me because mm-hmm. um, I do paint big paintings. Yeah, um, and I, and I also, sometimes I have a lot of paintings. So I, and and I'm always I like I said I'm always looking to sell. Like I have to, I'm always looking to to um, to find serious buyers that are interested. Because sometimes there's people who come here. And they're serious buyers, and like they only go to a couple places, or the people here only recommend them to a couple places, and right. it's like they would probably love to be able to find a place like mine, right? Because it's kind of hidden. I mean, who? Yeah, it is. When I first opened it, uh, people were like, "Why are you opening up a gallery in Cinco de Siembre? And I'm like, "Why not?" Mm-hmm. And like, it's it's the next part of town that's going to grow. Everyone's all, all the uh, all, all the um, foreigners that live in the neighborhood or come here um, are sick of Old Town. Yeah. Yeah, they stay it's like, here. It's, it's sad to go to Old Town now. It really is because it's just more expensive and it's it's uh, and it's just more um, more and more yuppie and less Mexican and mm-hmm. and you know what I mean. It's, oh yeah, no, it's cool. Whatever. I like to go there. It's nice. I like to go there. You get a. It's 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 comfortable. I really love it. But it's. I think uh, from their point of view, as people, they're like, oh, I came to this country to see Mexico, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I came to. A lot of people are like that. Yeah, you know, yeah which is cool. I like you're gonna find it here in Cinco de Siembre, That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's the type of people you'll find here. Yeah, and then the cool eateries, you guys. I mean, if you haven't ventured out of the South Side or haven't ventured out of downtown and actually walk down to Cinco de Siembre, you are missing out. You're oh, missing yeah. out on the best tacos. You're missing out oh, on some God. of the greatest little uh, little Hidden little spots, stores, yeah. little tiendas, little you know. And once again. Very safe neighborhoods to walk around mm-hmm. in during the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've lived in this neighborhood in about four or five different houses, and and I I just I always aim for this neighborhood because um, it's so close to downtown, and um, it's it's um, it's I would consider it to be the the as far as the local neighborhood that's in town, like the most prominent. I think. I think so too, and yeah, and also because it is so close to the south side. It, you, you you have access to to both worlds really, and which is really nice. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And, and and everything's everything is close by too. It's like if you need someone, uh, um, refri- refrigerator repair oh, guy, yeah. or if you need a, a hardware store, if you need like anything, it's all in this little. It's like a nice little tiny little town. It really is. Uh-huh. It really is. I love it here. Um, all right. So if somebody was going to um, ask you to do work for them let's just mm-hmm. say they were going to hire you to do a mural yeah. mm-hmm. do you do that kind of work at, oh yeah, yeah even though it's hidden in their backyard well yeah oh yeah you? well i mean i charge a pretty penny for those oh, <laughs> for sure. that's okay um but, but yeah I, I definitely do uh commissioned uh murals like right now I'm, I'm focusing more on paintings okay not commissioned paintings i don't want to because like that's the thing is like i i want to i want to move towards more towards painting my stuff my own style because i feel like i have something yeah you do. there's a lot of great artists out there and i don't feel like they have they're they're like amazing but they don't have anything original or anything you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i feel like if my stuff is like is is i feel like it's original and people are feel, people feel the same way i should probably focus on that more um because one day i don't want to do commissions and right. it's a, kind of a sad thing for well, some people <laughs> for some people they're like because people will have like their it's fun to, i've always been into like making people's dreams come true because that's my job right. it's like people have these ideas and they're like well let me call this artist and see if he can do it for him and it's so cool to see how happy they are when when i'm done like i, I made these people literally made these people's dreams come true yeah you know what i mean because yeah. it was just an idea in their head and it and it happened you know that's and they were cool. happy so um so what i want to do um is just let everybody know where you are where you look where's uh, where's the hive located the hive is located in cinco de diciembre on san salvador uh 370 san salvador okay um, and i understand you kind of have to make an appointment right you're not there yeah all the yeah time. i open by appointment now that's that's something i should uh, address too because i a lot of people tell me like oh you're never open or like if, if it was open it'd be and i know like if it was open it, I would probably be doing even better. Right. But um, uh, I'm like, I'm trying to produce and meet people. Like, I meet two or three people a day. Like, like I need to stop. I need to stop doing so many projects because it's kind of getting in the way of my work. But it, it's also making, it's also like making my work. It's making like, you, it's, it's making it's you bigger making and better, man. Yeah, it's making me. Like, as, a, as an artist, people are getting to know me and stuff. And, and it feels good to be able to be a part of the community and do something that, that matters and that's going to grow. Because I've already, it's already at the point where like I'm confident about its growth, and like I, I, I was here when uh, that's something I didn't talk about when I first got here. 
there was a few murals in town and they were hidden away in the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and some of them were by um, um what are these guys names Because they don't, they were got, even from got, here, but they were Adrian Tacano. No, Adrian, uh, uh, Adrian Tacano came after these guys. Oh, okay. um, um, he's, he's great, too. His stuff is amazing. Um, what is this guy? Fer Ayala. I'm trying to think of these other guys' last names. Ernesto. And um, I should remember these guys' names. But they, like, my point was that there was a few murals in town. And then um, Tony Collantes came to town. And by then, we were already, me and my buddy Roy Camacho, we were, we were doing, like, murals around town, like, not asking for permission and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, from the owners, yes, but, like, because what happened was that once it started growing, uh, a couple years after that, um, Semana Santa came, and the government erased every mural that Ooh. was in the downtown area without asking for permission from the private um From the owners, owners of the building because wow. they 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 argued the rustic code, which like people they haven't cared about the rustic code in so long. Like especially if you look at what's happening with um, Old Town. Oh yeah, for sure. Like they, it's cool. Whatever, it's growing like for everybody. Like I've I've actually been selling paintings from some of these people in, in those condos. You uh -huh, know, what I mean? sure, so, of course. But um. And there was kind of like a backlash from the community and even like the locals and even people in the government were like, who author you know authorized, I mean? it, yeah. authorized this? Who authorized this? It was a big deal. But oh, yeah. and it was it sucked. But I think it almost helped because after that, we kind of hit it harder and, and they knew that what, that what they did was wrong. Uh -huh. And um, so the yin and the yang came around, yeah, came yeah. around you know, the other way. Kind of, everything comes in waves. So, um, so they painted over yeah, they all painted these. painted over a bunch of walls, and 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 we we got upset, and we're kind of like against the. We were like, well, we're just going to paint more. Yeah. And uh, it got to the point where we started working with Imash. They're the um, the government sector for, that um, works with younger, um, younger people mm -hmm. um, that are doing stuff in the community. And uh, we, we restored the park that's behind uh, Parque Hidalgo. There's uh, the church there. Yeah. And the school. Yes. And then, and, right be and then behind that, there's the basketball courts. That little, um, there's a bunch of graffiti there now, which is cool. So it's like graffiti art. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're, we're thinking about redoing that too. Um, but we got about seven artists for that one too. And uh, the government, the, 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 they did a like a presentation for it. A bunch of people came out. We inaugurized it. The president gave us a um, like a what do you call it? Piece of paper. Certificate. Yeah, certificate or like a <laughs> an award. It gave uh, yeah, you and it gave us an award. Recognition. That's yeah. the word. <laughs> Reconocimiento is the word in Spanish. I'm yeah. like, it's running through my head. It's, that go. happens a lot. It. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I can think of it in Spanish, but I'm like. <laughs> um, That happens whenever I get stuck is because of that. I'm like thinking of of, of the word in Spanish. Oh yeah. Um, so he he presented you guys with a recommend. Or, uh, yeah, and since then they haven't said anything to us. We paint wherever we want. They don't even ask for it. You know what I mean? Really? And, and it, you know it would. That's why I'm trying to do the mural project. So there's some professionalism in this whole thing because we have had some run-ins with like some. Um, Um, just people that weren't down with the neighborhood people that weren't down with the wall, mm -hmm. mainly in spite of something. Uh, yeah. We, even Everyone's though we were covering up the graffiti and cleaning yeah. up the neighborhood. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic that you guys said, well, now this it's called the Mural Project? Yeah. The, okay. It's called the Adopt a Mural Project. Adopt a Mural Project. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, you can, and you can donate. There's a donate button there directly to PayPal on um, pvstreetart.com. Okay. And then uh, you can learn about the project there. Okay, so pvstreetart.com. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes. But if you don't want to do that, go to my show notes. You can go right to it. For sure. And uh, all right, let me, uh, let, let's, let's do a little bit of something that I, I always ask my guests. I, I go, I, now, now that I've, I've, I've gone through your art, let's ask you a couple of questions. Where do you like to eat? Where do I like to eat? Hmm. I like to eat um, I mean, across the street from the gallery. There's a little taco stand there. I was going to say, man, you're in 5th of December, man. Tell us. Yeah, tell like us, across uh, the street from... It's, that's the thing is, like, I, I, I don't rant or rave about, like, some of my spots because, uh -huh. like... Because then I mean? everybody is going to be moving yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've seen it happen before <laughs> with some spots where people rave about it online and all of a sudden it's, like, it's the spot. But, um, yeah, there's a spot across the street from the gallery, directly across the street. They get there about 11 uh -huh. at night. 
Uh, it's called Angelitas, and they have really good tacos uh-huh. and quesadillas. Okay. Um, and then where else do I go? <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> He's of just what. taco. He's just solamente tacos, you guys. Yeah, that's yeah. all I eat is tacos. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, I. I what about I, dinner places? You like uh, any any place that that. Uh, that you really like to go. I mean, if you were like going to splurge one day, or you know, some sometime or whatever, where would you go? If you weren't going to uh, go, so that is nice. To the, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, Barracuda. Ah, Barracuda. Yeah, good. that's in the neighborhood. Uh-huh. I think that's still considered Cinco de Diciembre. It is. Yeah, that place is really nice. Um, it's always kind of full, but it's right on the beach. Good ambience, decent service. Uh-huh. Um, trying to think. I know I have like a favorite spot that I like to go to. But I, I just move around a lot, you know what I mean? I'm always trying different stuff. Good. Um, and I eat at a lot of local spots. Right. Because um, I like to find the spots that aren't... I'm always on a rush. So I like to find the spots that are... I, I go and it's like I can get my food right away, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't like waiting. <laughs> right. You're in the, you're into the fast food, man. Yeah, I'm into the fast food because like it's it's good. It's good Mexican fast food. Like uh, there's, a, there's a torta place right in front of the... Uh, um, the OXO right there on San Salvador and I think Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Um, they they sell tortas for like you can get a regular torta for twenty eight pesos. <laughs> it's and like they're and they're fat bucket, and they put half. avocado in them. Uh, it's like that's one of the most amazing deals I've seen around. Oh town. wow, yeah, I'd, I'd be there every day. Oh well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then, and then they have bur- burritas and they have uh, milkshakes and they have like oh. it's really good. It's a, it's a, it's a stand. What's it called? You know, I don't think they have a name. It's just like the no the no yeah, name stand yeah, that feeds uh, you. They're just famous for like their their prices and their 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 they're just fast and they you know what I mean. They have a good good Ex- food. Excellent. They have one right in front of. I think it's it's the same owners. It's right on. Um, What's that street that's next to a Walmart going to? It's like on, where Aramara is. Okay. Or, or the um, La, La Aurora. Yeah, right at the entrance of La Aurora on okay. the corner okay. where the market is across the street. The, they're the same people. All right. So if you're in that neighborhood and you want to try Then you can them. check them That one's too. a little bit more packed, though. That one is like... <laughs> and I don't mind waiting sometimes, you know, if you got a little time. It's been discovered. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give to a first-time visitor to Puerto Vallarta? First time visitor, go to Yalapa. That's what I always tell people. Like, okay. obviously, stay in PV, but right. Um, to take a day trip to Yalapa. Like, um, that's what I always recommend to people because it's it it kind of gives you the feel of maybe what PV was like, you know, fifty, sixty years ago, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. It's obviously a lot a lot, mo- lot more modern, but it's just like it's a tiny little town with no cars. Everything's kind of cobblestone, and and it's like a little gnome town. It's like a little. Everything's just like an alleyway. You know what I mean? Ah. It's super beautiful. And then the beach there is really chill. It's you. You could bump into famous people there, which I, they probably don't want to be bothered. But um, it's just a chill, a chill beach. And there's the hiking there is amazing. Um, I, I, the seafood is there is amazing. Obviously, yeah. Um, as far as PV. What do I recommend about PV? The 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 neighborhood up from downtown. I feel like a lot of people don't go up there. Um, I was really impressed by that neighborhood when I first got here because yeah, it's like I live in the states my whole life, and it is nice to see real Mexican little houses and the neighborhoods and stuff. And that that neighborhood is beautiful. There's a lot yeah. of gardens and people's like just beautiful flowers and and uh, it's it's clean. And it's like hills, and it's right up from from PV. Yeah, yeah. I think that's called uh, El Cerro. Mm-hmm. El, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then and then those uh, what are those little parkways that go up the steps? Oh yeah. A- every street that goes up that like the street ends where the mountain starts, and they're just beautiful steps that go up the way yes. on every block. That's right. And you it's count just, to a hundred, and you made it to the top, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so much. Like you can roam that neighborhood if you want to take pictures of of like what beautiful Mexico and what like that neighborhood is just so beautiful it, it may it really makes you envy like the people who live there because it's it's not like this gorgeous big modern houses it's like these these big like some aren't big either but they're just Mexican really comfortable houses yeah you know I like that more than I think a, a modern house yeah I love that area and that's you know where Richard Burton and uh, Elizabeth Taylor hung out yep, right yep, there in right El down Cerro. the street from there yeah that's right mm-hmm. wow 
Um, Another thing is, uh, yeah, check out the Art Walk. Definitely check out the Art Walk. Um, check out uh, Joey Real. My buddy is actually doing an art, like a street art walk. Mm-hmm. So oh, he, really? he schedules those every once in a while, and he gives a tour around town to take people to the walls. Oh, cool! And it's cool that there's so there's so many now that you walk two blocks and you see another one. You walk two blocks and you see another one. That's so crazy to, for me to think Amazing. that. Like when I when I first got here, there was barely any. Right, you know what I mean, and I'm not saying it was because of me, but it was. I'm. It was because of every. You know what I mean. Yeah. Everyone who actually ended up getting together and 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 painting, even if they're painting on their own, you know what I mean. Uh, um, they're still a part of the scene if they're if they're doing work on the street for everyone to enjoy. Um, okay, so once again, tell everybody where to find your place. Um, San Salvador, Calle San Salvador, Cinco de Diciembre, um, three seventy. Okay, San and. Salvador. And then I will have his information if you want to get a hold of him. So that if you want him to come down and open up his gallery, so you can check it out, or you know if you want to stop and you know ask him to paint, paint a wall for you, or sure. you know commission for a, a nice piece of art, mm-hmm. uh, I'll have all that information in the show notes. Or if you're looking for work, time, also you can contact me, um, and uh, we can we can set up an appointment because I know there's there's people who who come here and they want to go home with a piece or they're specifically, I know I've, I've met people who specifically come to buy art to define art. Yeah. Cause it's, it's amazing that like some stuff is, is kind of expensive. Like I have some paintings that are, um, over a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? And I have one that's close to a, th- a 2000 and, uh, but that's fairly cheap compared to buying a, a painting from a known artist in San Francisco oh, yeah. or like, you know what I mean? Like, um, anywhere in the states, really. Yeah, definitely. Like, so I think that's why it's cool that people can come here and, and if, to find good work at a at a reasonable price. You know what I mean? And not not all of it's a thousand dollars. Obviously, <laughs> you can find stuff for you know what I mean two hundred dollars. That's amazing. And there's all these up and coming artists. So take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because yeah. I always used to. I still tell people. Even back then, I was like, now it's hard. Like my, I have people been telling me for years, like, oh, I want a painting from you, and it's like. That was three years ago. I'm like way more expensive now. You're never gonna get one <laughs> if you didn't get one don't, then. Don't wait, you guys. You hear yeah. that, man? The more famous you get, the more expensive it's gonna be too. Any of these artists, you yeah, know right? Like that, 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 that's why I, I, I tell people like it's an investment when you're buying from a great artist because, especially a known artist, sometimes you just like the piece and it's like a commercial piece, and the artist doesn't really. I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but. It, you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. people want that signature because they care. They want the artist. Yeah. And sometimes you connect with a piece that it's it's really it's by an unknown artist. Um, buy it now before they get known is what you're really saying, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My point was is when you're buying a painting from uh, a, a named artist, right? It's it's an investment. Right. And it's gonna it's gonna grow. That's why uh, uh, art artwork is more more expensive than gold. Because gold fluctuates in price, and art just keeps going up. That's why there's paintings that are two hundred million dollars. <laughs> there's a lot of other reasons too. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I said about for me with selling. I love business. It's it, something is worth what somebody is willing to pay for that thing. So exactly right. Um, so as you create pieces, you get some special things. You'll send me some pictures so I can post them so that yeah. some of the some oh, yeah. of my listeners can check them out too. And yeah, I can send you some of the stuff that we've been doing. And also, we uh, I don't know if um, Joey has up, up, updated the vlog yet, but um, we have a, a blog. I mean, oh, tell me. on, on the website. Oh, okay. So we'll we'll be listing everything that we've been doing on there. Uh, we've already done about seven walls with this project. Um, they're not all big or extravagant, but we're like we're we're painting walls around town, because um, it's also we want to work with the more established artists as far as um, their ability to paint murals, because sometimes you have these great artists who are like, oh, I want to paint a mural, and then they like they realize how hard it is, yeah. and they're not used to it, and then they leave it for a week or two, and then you know what I mean, uh-huh, or they right. take forever, and it's like. That's cool, but I'm, I can't. That's too much stress for me. No kidding. <laughs> I need people who are mural artists who are gonna get down. Right. You know what I mean? Well, they're they're used to the hard work. Yeah. So because oh, yeah. it's a that's beating, what it is. man. It's, a, it's it, sometimes it's like the cool thing about the summer is that we have all day to paint until you know nine. It gets dark. In right. The, in the winter, it's like it's fresh and it's it's like comfortable, but it's like it gets dark at five. Uh huh. It sucks. And in the <laughs> summer, it's like it's hot and you have the sun beaming on you. 
but you have all day to paint. Yeah. Because, like, if, if you have all day to paint, then I can I can paint a decent-sized mural in one day. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Um, With you and your spray paint. Yeah, I mean, you imagine, I've done, like, I did, I, the craziest thing I've done, I think I did a, a job for uh, um, Four Seasons, and, it, and I did it in like nine hours without Ooh. stopping because I needed it done. <laughs> and it was, was 15,000 pesos in one day. So yeah. I'm like, I'm, I You're wasn't in. complaining about it, but <laughs> I, I saw like the, how, far, how far I can paint, how much I can get done when I just don't stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that was a good, that was a good uh, reference point for me. So it's like, wow, like if, if I paint nine hours, I can, paint, I can finish a mural in one day. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And of course... When the people saw it the next day, it still smelled fresh, right? <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, that was for, uh, um, it was actually on um, like a tarp, a giant tarp they uh, hung uh, on backstage for a private Maroon 5 concert. Don't need They did at uh, Four Seasons. Yeah, it was for uh, Toshiba. They did their annual um, company party nice. in Four Seasons. They brought everybody from San Francisco and, uh, and yeah, they had all their workers there. So it was like, I don't know, 400 people private maroon five concert <laughs> no problem yeah, i wow. know i'm like yeah, that's cool <laughs> well were you invited to the concert yeah it was actually there's an interesting story behind that right. because and i wasn't layers. they were like oh you can't be there because this is a private thing but um i actually that i have something to confess i had finished uh, the tarp a week before and it took me about a week and it was like the hardest thing and it was during the summer, so it wasn't drying well. And when we folded yeah. it up it, and we opened it back up, it all stuck to itself. Oh, wow. It was like, I, I, I thought the universe hates me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was ready to cry. And like I, the, the person that, who had hired me was like, at least they were really cool about it. I mean, they're very professional people. I learned something there that you can't freak out right away. You have to ask, so what is your solution? And I'm like, well, if you guys can somehow hang it up for me right away, um, like at the place... I can paint it in one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, re it re actually really wasn't a day of work, uh -huh. but it really, it, it, I, and if I would have done it in a day of work, like it would have been the same price. Right? Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, it, it um, so they you, set it up for so, me. So and you were there. Huh? Yeah, because well, what happened was, <laughs> actually it was even better than that because what happened was she was like, I was like, well, if you can hang it up and I can, I can finish it as fast as possible, just do something new, you know what I mean? And she was like, okay, well, you're, it's a show's tomorrow, so you're going to stay at the Four Seasons, and in the morning, you're going to get painting. And I'm like, okay. Oh. <laughs> so I got my room at the whole Four Seasons, and I got, it was like, whoa, I was like, I guess God doesn't hit me. I got, no. to, I got to go to the show and stay at Four Seasons because this, this, this all went to because shit. Because that happened. Because that happened. So, and I'm, you know, and, and I'm always, I always try and stay optimistic especially after being deported it was the worst thing that ever happened to me and it ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me there you go so like it makes me look at life in such a uh, a strange way uh, and you know it's really about the way it's the law of attraction it's like you have this problem and it's gonna piss you off and the, the faster you you forget about how pissed you are and you get to fixing it and and it, the faster you're gonna fix it right exactly um it's the professional I, way. Yeah, it is. It is because yeah. I, I, I was a very, um, exp I, uh, I was a very explosive person. Like, especially because everything it was just, everything was just piled on me. Like it was, people would be like, "Why do you have to freak out?" I'm like, "Well, it's because uh, you think it's because of this little thing, but it's like it's years of shit piling yeah. up on top of shit." You know what I mean? Right. And and it, and it makes you explode. And and luckily, I, I I realized that, and I said, okay, so I need to start fixing this problem. And now I'm at a point where it's like, when something happens, even if it's really crappy, I don't explode anymore because it's like it, I don't have all this, like you know what I mean? You don't have that built up anger yeah, going on because up. you're living in paradise, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, even before <laughs> that, I lived in paradise, and I would still freak out. Yeah. Like I'd be breaking stuff and screaming at the top of my lungs, and it's like. I came from chaos, you know what I mean? I was an anarchist when I was a kid. And I came from just complete chaos and disorder. So I had to like build, I had to dig myself out of that hole. Yeah. And I realized that I was in that hole and I dug it for myself and I had to dig myself or had to climb out of it. And it wasn't going to be fast. It had to little by little and like, 
it's it's um yeah i'm happy yeah <laughs> i'm happy because i there was times when i all i had to eat was uh five uh, a half kilo of tortillas with five pesos and a cup of water man you know what i mean so um yeah i've come a long way you sure have yeah. and i gotta you know i gotta tell you it's been really really great talking with you today yeah thank you it's likewise and uh appreciate you, uh, you for inviting me uh, your work is amazing dude thank you man yeah all right everybody go see me see yeah, come see me. Thank you for listening. Man, now that was that was quite a story, wasn't it? I mean, you've you've got the the heartbreak of being separated from your family and and being deported, and then arriving in Puerto Vallarta, a strange place, and then making a transformation, doing a complete one eighty, and now helping unify the Vallarta art scene. It's it's pretty cool. Um, now, I went to their Facebook page, and uh, I want to read from it a, a kind of review of what we just talked about. And it goes like this. The Hive Studio Galleria is a cultural base dedicated to showing and collaborating with local, national, and international artists on communal events in the Banderas Bay Area. It serves as the base for pvstreetart.com, a site dedicated to locating, documenting, and creating murals in the Pueblos, located in the Banderas Bay area, with block parties focusing on the beautification and restoration of neglected areas, with the creation of public murals, shedding light on global environmental issues that concern our communities. We want to create a platform where there can be a dialogue on these issues, with the end goal being educating ourselves on solutions that we can apply to make an effective social change in society. Funding for these projects will be made from our Adopt a Mural Project fundraiser, focusing on working with private and commercial patrons to produce these murals with the resources needed for a smooth workspace for artists that donate their time and talent to creating works that can only be enjoyed by the public on highly transited streets where they can get the most exposure. The Adopt a Mural Project is a fundraiser aimed at connecting with patrons that share the common goal of beautifying our neighborhoods with conscious community uh, projects like trash cleanup and the creation of public murals, highlighting global environmental and social issues that are highly overlooked in our society. The hive mentality, a beehive, is in an enclosed structure in which bees work together toward the common goal of protecting the queen, the honey production, and the overall colony. We use the metaphor of the hive as a way to identify our planet, community of artists, and art enthusiasts. We are the bees, and the queen is the all-inspiring muse that aids in our motives. We pollinate by reaching out into our communities to create honey, our representation for culture and education. Our planet is our hive, and we must serve to protect it at all costs. There has been a debate over bees being an endangered species. Nevertheless, we at the hive believe in raising awareness about the importance of bees and the positive effects they have on our planet. We use the metaphor of the bees as a platform for tackling these environmental issues like waste and endangered species with our public public murals created by artists with help of volunteers and sponsors of all walks of life. So, they describe how you can get involved, and uh, we can read a little bit about that. We're always looking for a helping hand of any form during the creation of the murals, takes a lot of hard work and money from the from these artists' pockets to produce these beautiful works of art for the public to see often with zero help. And we at The Hive believe that artists should freely create and their needs be met during the creation process. That includes finding walls, providing all the materials necessary for the production, and keeping them well-fed and hydrated. If you'd like to donate to our cause or learn more about how you can sponsor a whole mural, with the Adopt a Mural project, go to pvstreetart.com where we can provide you with further information on these cultural events and how you can get involved. 
If you would like to volunteer, contact us at any one of our social media provided below. And I've got a list of all of those things in the show notes for this episode of the Port de Vallada Travel Show. So make sure that you check those out and check out all of the uh, all the links for all the things that uh, that we saw, likes all the, the the restaurants and all the other great stuff. Um, like I said, I have links to everything uh, and his artwork. You know, we've got some great, great artwork from Misal. Again, check them out in the show notes. Do that right now, just as soon as you get done listening to the show. All right? Okay. Well, that should do it for this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant and excursion ideas, and more. But until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to be using someone else, so just do it, really. And when you do take one of his tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And don't forget, he's got his, his maps, his DIY tours, his revitalized happy hour board, and more. And I have links to all of those in the show notes. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes. If you will. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Remember, I made it easy for you to do just that with each episode that I create. And if you haven't been to my website, you really need to go there and have a look. I have links to all the places that we talk about. I have interesting pictures and more right there in the blog posts and in the show notes for each and every episode that I create. So check them out if you haven't already. All right? All right. So... Thank you so much, Misal Ivan Lopez from the Hive Gallery in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, make sure that you stop by and see him next time you're in town. Check out the pvstreetart.com Adopt a Mural Project, definitely. Um, really, go to the show notes, check it out, and see what you can do to get involved in helping these artists get these murals up. All right, and look, thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Yeah, yeah, yeah.